you ready for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous? Because I am. Crusaders, hello. Are you ready to learn Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous? A lot of people ask me about one beginner's guide and they said how most of my guides are way too complex and they are there for unfair difficulty and harder difficulties okay and i speak about advanced things only but they would all like to see the beginner's guide like someone that never played the game and now you're here okay trying to learn how to play wrath of the righteous all of the mechanics but i won't be bothering you with mathematics and how the game actually works. I'll simplify things to the ground so you can play this game easily as a beginner on core difficulty and above. So first of all, you should know who are you listening to. I am one of the very few people that finish the game on the unfair difficulty among 0.3%, better to say, and Yes, I know the game very well, better than 99.7% of players. That's the reality. Am I the best in this game? No, I even know people that, that are absolutely insane on unfair difficulty. And unfair difficulty in this game is probably one of the hardest things that exists in video gaming. Okay, it's brutal. So let's go and let's try to simplify things as much as we can for Wrath of the Righteous. This is gonna be like the ultimate mega beginner's guide. All basics about Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. First things first, we're gonna start with settings. Copy and paste everything that you see here in your settings and pause when you want to. I'll go slowly. Now, new game, you got main story, 3 DLCs, and 3 DLCs to be released in a Season Pass 2. Of course, you want to open up with main story campaign, that's huge, okay, and then you want to play in order, inevitable access, and through the ashes. I would not recommend the Treasure of Midnight Isles to newcomers at all. It's a roguelike CRPG, basically. Now, a lot of people ask me about the difficulty. As you can see, there's a custom difficulty and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven difficulties to play on. With story as the easiest one and unfair as what it says it is. Completely unfair. Extremely hard. Avoid it like plague. For newcomers, after we're done with this guide, I believe that you will be able to play on daring core difficulty if you learn and apply everything that I say in this guide on your run. So play it on core or daring. I know you can do it after this guide. Simple as that. Now, as far as uh, character creation go, I recommend creating your own character, custom character, not picking the pre-made characters here. Once you go on a custom character, you got 300 startup builds on my channel that you can use for your run okay for all classes and subclasses in the game with everything with race with heritage with skills ability scores everything that you like plus you got around 2000 breath of the righteous video on my channel where you can check more advanced gameplay on unfair difficulty if it works, if something works on unfair difficulty, it works on all other difficulties as well. Simple as that. Create your own custom character and play what you like. Not what's OP or what someone claims that it's OP and so on. 
If you wanna play a freaking battle mage, do it. Let's start with inventory, or better to say with itemization, because it's the easiest one to explain. Okay, if, for example, your belt gives plus 6 bonus to strength, and your helmet gives also, if you find a helmet that gives plus, let's say, 4 bonus to strength. It's gonna count as plus 6 only. It won't be 6 plus 4, 10 strength. Okay, plus 10 strength. It's gonna be plus 6. It always counts the item with the highest value. Alright, if highest value is, for example, for intelligence here, plus 8. This is intelligence, wisdom and charisma, plus 8 and you got any other item that gives charisma, intelligence and wisdom plus 2, it's gonna count only this one. So, if we know that now, then we also know that every attribute point, strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom and charisma, are important on all classes, okay? And all subclasses. Yes, there is always one attribute point that is absolute, okay? For bruisers, it's usually strength. For rogues, it's usually dexterity. For uh, some mages, it's intelligence. For, for some, it's charisma. For clerics, paladins, wisdom, charisma, and so on, okay? But they profit out of all. Every class and subclass should be in green, okay? When it's green, it gives positives, okay? Plus, plus, plus. So, be careful how you place items on your characters. Remember, only one plus to something counts. That same rule applies for attack. In 95% of cases for items, same rules apply. Items do not stack. Pay attention on descriptions and what it gives. And don't apply the same description on some other item. In-game combat rules. Uh, the first things first. Uh, the skull you see here, artificial intelligence, is whether your companions are gonna do stupid stuff on their own or you're gonna do this and control them on your own. Once it's like this, they do stupid stuff on their own. How to make them not to do stupid stuff on their own? If, for example, you want Nenio to cast on artificial intelligence only magic missiles all you need to do is right click on magic missiles here and it's gonna appear over here now when you click on a skull and when it's on Nenio and when you right click on magic missiles she's only gonna cast magic missiles and not all of the spells that are available for her same applies for every spell for every character for every skill what you tell them to do over here, that's the, what they gonna do. And it's the easiest way to play, especially if you intend to play on core or daring difficulty. Then you can play with this non-stop. Turning it off is usually good or unfair. I play without it most of the time when it's a difficult fight because you need to organize. But you can easily apply this on core and daring difficulty until you learn how to play the game. The next thing are buffs and pre-buffs. When you hover like this, you're gonna see all buffs and debuffs applied to your characters, okay, to main and to companions, all right. And once you hover, you can see what each buff or debuff does. The green line is, of course, health and at the bottom, where it says 36 plus 252, those would be hit points health. In other words, flat health. Now also, the important question is whether to play this game in a turn-based mod or real-time action with pauses. I detest turn-based mod for one very simple reason. First, it's easier to play in turn-based than in real-time. Okay, way much easier. The game has different calculations on turn-based and on real-time. I pick real time because it's more challenging. I pick real time because I can pause whenever I want to instead of waiting for five minutes for enemy to play. Number three, fights last way much longer on turn-based. 
so that's why I play in real time. Because I can end the fight in a minute. Literally, sometimes even in 10 seconds. Fights that are gonna last like 15 minutes on turn-based mod, I'll end them in 30 seconds. What does it do? It saves your game time. Okay. Because this is a huge game too, 300 hours long game. You want to play on real time. Plus, in my personal opinion, it's 10 times more fun. And it's very rare to find CRPGs in real time. Most of the CRPGs are turn-based. Like Divinity, Wasteland. Very, very few are real time like Dragon Age Origins or this one, Breath of the Righteous or Baldur's Gate 2. This over here camp is your button to rest. Once you see the numbers here for your spells, 12 usages of this, 14 for this, 8 for this, 6 for this, and once you exploit all of that and when it says 1 or 0, you want to put your camp and rest. It's gonna reset all of your skills to proper values so you can use them again in a battle. Rest smart, okay? Expand all spells that you can before resting. Do not rest non-stop because you're gonna accumulate um, during the main campaign. This is inevitable access. You're gonna accumulate abyssal, I forgot the name, okay? Like a freaking curse, all right? if you rest way too much. So, expand those skills and then rest. Formation. There are multiple ways to play formations. It all depends on your game knowledge. It depends on characters you're bringing with you and on your main. Beginners should always have tanky characters up front. All right, tanky characters in this case, it's me and Trevor. Up front. In the middle, it should be supports. Like Diran or Ember. Backline should be shooters. Like Lan. Okay. And this should be your formation as a beginner. Once you get to know the game a bit better, it's the opposite. Okay. Only ranged characters remain behind, those with bows and crossbows. They always remain behind. But, once you learn how this game works, and once you learn how to trigger fights, surprise rounds from stealth, then your mages, uh, huge AoE effects, they gonna go first information. In this case, it will be, once you learn, it will be Diran that goes first. And your tanks will remain like this behind, you can trigger, for example, with both Ninio and Diran. I'll explain how later on. And once they're like this, when you move them, see the formation. Squishes are up front instead of tanks. You actually tank. You get Ninio. You use some huge AoE spell, like, for example, a fireball. It doesn't matter. You cast it during pause. Okay, now she's casting Fireball. Then you take Diran and you cast Firestorm at the same time. Surprise round. You surprise enemies. Imagine if enemies are here. You unroll. They cast their own thing. Alright. You take them. They have initiative to cast again. You move a bit backwards. Like this. Everyone else remain they're holding because now your tanks are holding the line enemies seeing you they're going towards you okay you move them slowly behind enemies are like here now already you can recast those spells again and prepare for your tanks to mitigate upcoming damage from enemies what does it mean you're gonna burst them like crazy with this formation okay you get surprised round, you get a full round, you get a round to, to prepare. Those would be three full rounds of free damage and positioning for your team. That is when you know how to play. I told you. Until you learn, you put up your bruisers and tanks up front, and you put squishes all the way behind with ranged at the very bottom. That's how you arrange formation. Again, it depends on a team build. Now, everyone 
that's new to the game just talk about mythic pot and what mythic pot you should use for your main alright they all talk about this and I keep saying it non-stop it's not important at all for your first run play what you like arrange your main character with a mythic pet to have some background behind it like for example if you take a necro wizard or a necro sorcerer you go with a lich okay if you take a conjurer summoner sorcerer or a summoner mage you go with a zata merge them okay it's very simple because that's what you wanted to play if you play as like we're here i'm playing inquisitor i took a I played also a war priest, I took angel, okay, and then a legend, alright, play things that merge together well, alright, that's what you should do, you play, I don't know, a barbarian, pick if you're an evil one, pick a devil pet, demon pet, okay, if you're good, play with angel, play with ale, do not think about mythic parts, man. Just don't do it, because this game is far bigger than only mythic parts. You should have fun. And on your second run, start thinking about builds, mythic parts, and so on. You want to learn the game. Remain in the concept. Learn it. Now we're going to talk about inventory and encumbrance. This line that you see over here, okay? It always needs to remain light. That's all you need to know without complicating things. Remain light till the first dot. Always be in this range and you're good to go. Once and only once, when you clear the entire map from all enemies and you're sure that you clear the map, you can exit the map and once you exit, it's gonna offer you an option to collect all. If you are returning back to the city, then collect all and become with medium encumbrance or encumbered all right that's when you can do it while you play there is no need while you're on the map to encumber yourself with items do it at the end let's talk about defense type of defenses in the game there are hit points your health armor class flat footed touch Fortitude, Reflex, Will. All resists, cold, electricity, fire, acid, sonic, and so on. Okay, those would be all defenses in the game. There is also evasion, there is dodge. There are a lot of things also from buffs that are gonna enhance your defense and so on. But what is the most important? This is a million bucks question and where most of the players make huge mistake even when they think they know how the game works they actually don't know shit and they're gonna say how everything is important and so on and so forth the bigger these numbers are the tankier your characters are and the less they're gonna die and that is correct but it's also a waste because you can deal damage and remain safe with zero defenses for some characters so, what defense is the most important for tanky characters and bruisers, paladins, fighters, all of those subclasses, war priests, I don't know how many, blood ragers, barbarians, blah blah blah, basically everyone that goes in to whack someone in the face or to tank up, they have only one stat that's important and it's fortitude okay all are important on a bruiser reflex will and fortitude but fortitude is the most important one all right from armor and resist they need it all and only those characters need it all bruisers and techs what is armor class how much damage you're gonna mitigate. Then dodge applies on top of it all. Sometimes the enemy will miss you and so on. It depends on dice rolls also, because we're not doing mathematics here and complicating things. 
I'm trying to remain straightforward and very simple explanations about this and how it works. When you clash with someone one-on-one, -on -one, armor class number is what counts. When second enemy comes from the side and hits you, and you're fighting this one up front and someone hits you from the back, that's when flat-footed counts. So you get the difference what's armory class and what's flat-footed now. Touch is your resistance to magic, to spells. Okay, when enemies cast spells, touch is the one that resists. And same rules apply for enemies when you hover over them and inspect. We're gonna talk about it later. Now, I explained that all of this is very important for bruisers and tanks. Everything. Armor class and saving throws. Saving throws are fortitude reflex and will. Armor class is touch, flat footed and armor class. What about other characters? What about squishes? The only and the only save. We said that saving throws are fortitude reflex and will. The only saving throw that you need to pay attention to is will. You don't care about fortitude, you do not care about reflex. If it works again on unfair, it's gonna work for you also when you go with core, daring, or hard. The only important saving throw for mages, ranged characters, supports is will. Because you want to resist charms, dominates, and other spells that affect mind the brain. You want them to be in control non-stop and that is the only important thing for all other characters but bruisers. Everything else, touch, flat-footed, armor class and so on, you do not care about it at all. You can play naked if you want. You only need well. I hope I made myself clear how it works with defense in the game. Now let's transfer to offense, offensive stats. What are offensive stats? This over here. Attack, damage, and critical. Without complicating things. Plus 15, plus 55, plus 40, plus 100. It is your chance to hit. Attack is your chance to hit. The higher this number is, the better chance you're gonna hit someone. Why there are multiple numbers, 55, 55, 50, 45, 40. It's how many times you can swing in a round, and one round lasts for six seconds. So in this case, we can swing five times with 55, 55, 50, 45, and 40 chance to hit. Okay, I don't want to complicate with how it calculates with armor class, with flat-footed, with all other things that you don't really care about when you learn how to play the game. The only thing that you need to know is that attack is your chance to hit, that it. Uh, depends how many numbers are here, that's how many times you can swing in a round, and round lasts 6 seconds. That's all there is to know about the attack. Damage. Damage is how much you'll hurt when you hit. And damage, when you hover over weapons, you're gonna see stats like 3d6, 1d8, 2d6, and so on. Plus you're gonna see enchantment on a weapon. Enchantment plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That goes for attack. And here where it says damage when equipped, 40 to 55, that's the actual damage you're gonna deal when you hit. All right, prom two. And this thing is calculation. And that's the most important thing. These are dices. Because the entire game works on dices. You don't need to know the numbers. You just need to know how it works. 2d6 is always better than 1d8. 3d6 is always better than 2d8. 2d6 and 1d8. The bigger this beginning number here, the more you'll hurt. Simple as that. At the end, we got critical. Critical is the opposite. The lower the number, 
the bigger is your chance to crit. So when it says 17 to 20, it's better than when it says plat 20. Plat 20 is a low chance to crit. From 15 to 20 is absolutely great chance to, to crit. So the lower the first number is, the better is your chance to score a crit on an enemy. Same rule applies for enemies of you. What is the number of over here? Multiplies three, okay? Three times more pain. Two times more pain on a crit, okay? You see that's 15 to 20, three times more. The bigger this upper number is, the stronger the crit. The lower the first number is, the higher the chance for you to score a crit. That's a very simple explanation about attacks. Also, attacks can be slash, pierce, and blunt. Some enemies will receive more damage from slash, some will receive more damage from pierce, and some, like for example skeletons, will receive more damage for blunt. And it's always good to have a, especially at the beginning of the game, and if you are a beginner at this game, it's good to have like two or three different types of weapons. A sword, a sledgehammer, and I don't know what, a pike. So you cover all type of damage on your character. Until you learn how to play the game. Now, I, I would explain to you how combat maneuvers work, but I don't want to complicate. Very simple. The bigger this number is, the better it gets. Do not even think about it when you're a beginner. Bab, bab, call it however you like. This is the most important thing in the game. I recommend that you find some guide on the internet that only explains this and nothing else. Only this. So you get to know how it works. That's what I would recommend for you to do. Just learn what base attack bonus is. It is the most important thing in a game, after all. Whether you know about it or not, if you remain with this guide, you don't even need to know. But do it for yourself. Initiative. For those that play on turn-based, this is important stat. It ain't that important for real time. It is on the harder difficulties, but you don't need to pay that much attention on initiative if you're gonna play in real time. Okay, only in turn-based. Plats and pits and subclasses and the most important question and I see you asking non-stop whether you should multiclass or not, should I multiclass this with that and so on. No, you should not multiclass as a beginner, never. I don't care if you've seen some guide with multiclass. And I know everyone does guides with multiclass because they think they're smart and you take their guides, okay, that you can find with multiclasses, test it on unfair and see how it goes. That means it sucks. Should you multiclass? Yes, when you know how to play the game. You should never multiclass because of one simple reason. Okay, you want to see the highest level spells from the class you're playing, okay? Because most of them will receive highest level spells of level 20 without multiclassing. Do multiclass on your second run, on your third run. Don't do it on your first run. Feats. Yellow feats, team feats are the most important feats in the game. And those would be outflank, shake it off, and precise strikes. That's everything you need to know about team feats. Then you can learn other team feats. But those three that I said are the first to learn. Not immediately, of course. In the first, like, 10 levels or so, you can add three feats, they're gonna do that. The rest of the feeds go for weapon proficiency or in case of mages for spell penetration for greater spell i don't know if you're into evocation you go with evocation if you're into necromancy you're gonna go with your necromancy and so on okay but make sure that you have these feats on your characters okay especially on melis precise strikes and outflanks especially on melis they're gonna hurt way much more what are these strange icons here? Okay, that's bad that I told you to learn about. So do it. I'm reminding you again. The rest, as you can see, are these three saves. Fortitude, Reflex and Well. 
Some classes receive it in different order and some classes. Some receive more wealth, some receive more bab, some receive more fortitude and so on. And so on. What are the big circles? Big circles are those that you're gonna receive new things, new spells, new skills, new things to use. Big transparent circles. Now you might end up at seeing strange type of attacks. Bite, claws and so on. Those are attacks that apply additionally on your attack when you see them. Basically when you see them they're usually a good thing to have but do not pay attention to it unless you specifically play a build with bites, bites, claws, nails, and so on. But those, those are just not builds for beginners. Avoid it. In the abilities tab, you can see everything that you learned along the way. Books, for example. Read all books that you find along the way in your inventory. Right click on a book and read. You're gonna learn things like get more perception, plus 10 hit points, plus one bonus to lore, plus one to this, plus one to that. Learn, l read freaking books when you find them. Don't ditch them, don't sell them. First you read them, then you do what you want. For new passive things, read. Now let's talk about Ability points, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. The most important one in 90% of cases is wisdom. For nearly all characters, you want high wisdom. Not at the start of the game, at the mid game, late game, you want high wisdom or will saves. It gives will saves. Okay, I already explained what is will. You want freaking wisdom high. All right. Charisma is there for persuasion. Only one character should do it, and that's a perfect one named Diran. Because his spells also scale through charisma, and he's got persuasion. If you play with Diran, you're covered in the entire run. On both parts. Intelligence. The higher the intelligence is, the more skill points you will get to invest into skills on every level. The lower it is, the less you'll get. Okay. Aside from, from having usage on ma some mages and so on that scale their uh, damage on spells with intelligence like Nenio, they also receive a lot of skill points. Constitution is classic. Hit points, okay. Now, some of the melees are all ranged. They use strength for damage scaling and attack. Some use dexterity. That all depends on your feats, on your class, and on your subclass. Okay. Not all ranged use dexterity. A lot of them also use strength. But dexterity is also important if you want to hit. Now, not all melees use strength to hit. Some of them also use dexterity. It depends what weapon you pick to wield. If it's some light weapon, it's usually dexterity. Okay, the heavier the weapon is, it's usually strength. Consumables, spells, scrolls, spells through scrolls. Uh, how and when to use them. They are the most important things at the start of the game. You got my guides from level 1 to level 6 on my channel. One video about it. And I would recommend watching it, okay? From level 1 to level 6, all of the scrolls explained extremely well from start to finish with all spells available and how you should use them. You check that video out, you'll know what to do later on for sure. How do we pre-buff before fights? When it says spells that last, for example, like this, 10 minutes per level, it's the spells that you want to cast when entering the map. Because they last 10 minutes per level. Okay, or a minute per level, you can also easily cast them when you enter the map. Especially on level 10 and above. That's 10 minutes and higher. In this case, 10 minutes per level. Level 10 would be like, what, 100 minutes for a map. So that's when you want to cast spells with that duration. Before entering fights, you want to cast pre-buffs that are an hour 
per level and just before you trigger enemies you wanna cast spells that are around duration like this one round per level okay again entering map 10 minutes one hour per level before the fight one minute per level just before you trigger the surprise round one round per level buffs. That's how you do any Mossy Travis. Okay, pre-buffs. And it's very important to pre-buff with everyone. Okay, cast spells that you want during pause. Unpause, they all cast buffs. You pause again, you trigger another set of buffs. Unpause, that's how you save time. If you position well and if you want to trigger enemies and do like I said and you for, for example place Diran to trigger them with, I don't know, with Firestorm. Once the last pre-buff is cast, one round per level, you insta-pause, click and begin. That's how you're gonna have all of these beautiful buffs available and they're gonna be valid during the fight, they won't expire. Just learn how to use pause, practice a bit. The last thing that I wish to speak about is map exploration and how you should explore the map with stealth. Basically, it should be done with a character that's got highest stealth, okay? This. And it's even better when you cast invisibility on the highest level character. See if... Ah, I got it. You cast this. On the character that's got like at, at the beginning like 15, 20 stealth, you cast invisibility, you can easily, easily avoid all enemies, pass through them, collect all loot, okay, and come back to your own team. That's how you're gonna know where the enemies are positioned, what type they are if you inspect them on the inspect button, how hard the fight is gonna be, what's the level of enemies. And you're gonna collect a lot of loot, transfer among your characters before entering the fight. So remember, stealth and invisibility. And you explore all. Then you roam around and fight. You trigger stealth with this button here. Now for the spell book, and someone asks me, what are the most important skills and spells in the game that has 160 and something subclasses with all different spells and so on? with different team compositions. There is no perfect spell for all levels from level 1 to level 20. There are some unique spells that are always good. Heroism, Prayer, True Strike of course, so you can actually hit enemies, Classic Bless early on, Entangle to stop enemies, Pits to drop them underground, um, some flat AoE resists, okay, like resist communal, they call it communal in this game, and communal spells are always better than single target spells on a long run. Communal resist electricity, communal defend against evil, communal defend against this, against that, okay. Everywhere where it says communal, like for example, I don't know, this gets great mess. Communal, those are great spells to have, especially when you're a beginner. As far as skill goes, you need to make sure that you cover every possible skill check in a game. If your main character, like mine here, has athletics and, I don't know, use magic device or lord nature, Diran has persuasion, knowledge arcana and world, then, I don't know, Ember has lore and use magic device and uh, Volgif will have mobility okay you need to have them all covered with the highest possible stat on your teammates okay you gotta have them all when you combine your entire team squad you need to have them all everyone can be proficient at two things that's good enough what is the most important skill to have it's perception. You want to spot hidden doors, hidden traps, hidden objects. You want to have more loot. 
perception provides. It's the most important. After perception, it's persuasion. After persuasion, it's stealth and use magic device. Use magic device is the thing that you're gonna need to cast spells from scrolls or wands. Of course, usually characters that have huge perception should also have huge trickery. So you can unlock just. Last but not least, do not forget to inspect enemies. All of these rules that I said, defense, offense, resists, everything that I was speaking about, same rules apply for enemies. All you need to do is press this button over here or hover over enemies and their stats will show up. Inspect your enemies before entering the fight. If enemy is weak to pierce, switch to a freaking pike or a javelin and kill him. If he's weak to blunt, switch to a sledgehammer. That's how the game works. If he's resistant on fire, throw some ice at him. If he's resistant on, I don't know, on every freaking spell in the game, uh, that deals fire or cold or poison damage, then, I don't know, hit him with... with magic missile. Of course. Last thing, should you use out your level up? Never, ever, you ruin the entire game like that. Where is the fun of playing CRPG without the level up? Please do manual level up. For team composition and companions, you got my ultimate companions guide. I advise you to watch it. And then you'll know who you want to play with and what team composition you want to play with. At the end, Wrath of the Righteous is not the game that you can learn in a few hours. 10 hours, 20, 30, 50, 100. I can easily say you can't even learn in a 2000 hours. You need to spend a lot of time in this game to master it. If you're here to have fun, that's a different topic then. And you can apply this guide to help you out. I already told you, you want companions guide, it's on the channel. You want best spells and skills to learn, it's on the channel. You want startup builds for the beginners, it's on the channel. You want advanced unfair guides, mythic paths and so on. It's on the channel. Home screen on my YouTube channel. Playlists. It's very simple and easy to find. I forgot to mention one very important thing about perception. Perception, when it says perception check failed over here. Okay. I reload the game. Do it again until perception check is a success. That's when it says perception check fails. It means there's a hidden item or a hidden door or a hidden chest around your party and they just didn't detect. Once it says success, that means it's detected. It's a very important thing. I reload and do it again for the loot. Do not avoid companion quests. Do not avoid side quests, because every quest is equally important in Breath of the Righteous. There are no fetch quests, and that's a beautiful thing. Every single thing that you can see in a journal is important, okay? Every single thing. Unique and fun and challenging. Now, for the spellbook, some classes do not have a spell. Some mythic pots have great spellbooks. Some companions, or better to say classes and subclasses, have a spellbook like this, where you got a limited amount of usages per day. And some of them you need to drag and drop, like on Nenio, okay, like this, and apply skills. That's the entire difference in a spellbook. Some learned it on their own, and some you need to drag and drop. Meta magic. Avoid like plague as a beginner. This is the way how you can empower your spells, prolong them, make them stronger basically, or make them last longer. 
but it's also very tricky to use as a newcomer. Plus, you can finish the game without using meta magic. I would advise to avoid meta magic. If you really want to go with meta magic, maybe try to learn some build with invocation and empower. So you can actually check how it works. And then you can start using other meta magic. But I would advise to avoid, like Plague. That would be it for this beginner's guide. I hope that you can understand the game better now. For more advanced things, you got thousands and thousands of hours on my channel. Or feel free to ask on my Discord page. It's your choice. Thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.